All right, guys, what's up? Welcome to One Life Podcast. Here is Zoe. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Uh, she's an active personal trainer, mm -hmm. a nutritionist, mm -hmm. and you also have a degree in Bachelor of Exercise Science, yes. correct? Yes, correct. I got that out. That's awesome. <laughs> and you're also a mom in the last, what, year and a half? How old your daughter? 16 months. 16 months. So mm -hmm. that's awesome. Yeah. A lot of stuff I want to touch on you, um, touch with you. First thing comes to mind, leading by example okay you're a mom i saw a video of you at the gym your daughter's there she's yeah. copying you mm -hmm. i think that's amazing yeah i think does. that is priceless <laughs> thank you and i think it's easier like it's so oh don't drink soda don't eat this but when you see your parents doing it right i think your kids are gonna kind of follow suit yeah i think the biggest thing that i learned especially when i was pregnant is that you can't just tell your kids to do something and not do it yourself. Like you can't tell them to go work out and expect them to do that. Or don't have soda when you're sitting there drinking soda. Exactly. How is that fair? It's and you hypocritical. Con you're contradicting yourself, right? Yeah, the whole do as I say, not as I do is BS. not my MO. <laughs> yeah, and I, I remember my parents saying that and you, you gotta lead by example. And like, mm -hmm. you're seeing it like you're, like my daughter's about to turn nine. She watches everything I do and she has for the last nine years. Mm -hmm. And I love the fact you're exercising and rather than your kids sitting in the corner playing game mm -hmm. or being on the phone, copying what you do. Yeah, exactly. The gym is basically like her jungle gym. She plays with the kettlebells, she plays with the dumbbells, the medicine balls. It was funny watching like when she was learning how to walk, she like just learned how to walk and we have this little like six inch box. Mm. And it was so cool to see like her perseverance. Like she would just like step up on it oh, and then gotcha. she would like, walk off of it. And then she would get up and she would do it again and again and again. And it's funny though, like whatever I have my clients do, she'll try to copy them as well. That's so and cool. So it's cute to see, but babies have like perfect form. They and flexibility form, and flexibility everything and no like, limitations wow. <laughs> exactly. and all, all the above and as we get older we just forget about that and we just exactly get boring we get stuck you i want to touch on you mentioned before we started that somebody saw that video so mm -hmm. you you're doing a def, deadlift right yep and you got your little one doing a deadlift with plastic weights yep. and it's the cutest thing i've ever seen and i got such a soft spot for little girls because i got my own mm -hmm. and you're getting like hate in the comments yeah that was that video it was supposed to be like the realities of working out with a 15 month old to like show that, you know, you don't always get your whole workout in. Like sometimes you have to take breaks and you have to be with her and tend to her. But yeah, this particular comment, he was like, well, you know, good thing you're working out her physical because her intellect clearly isn't there. But I mean, how could we expect it to be there when she has you as a mother bringing a baby to a gym? And I was just like, ah. mm, <laughs> okay. just like savage, like Sorry, you said. Sir. Yeah. Yeah, and the problem is nobody knows the situation. They see no. this little two-second clip of mm -hmm. what they think is fact. Right. And like I said, they don't know if you were in the gym, there's nobody in the gym, there's a thousand people in the gym. Exactly. Just mind your own business. Exactly. Like if it was a public gym, for sure, but it's not. It's a private gym. Mm. And every single trainer knows her. She goes up to them. She says hi. Some of them will like pick her up and carry her around during their sessions. So everybody at that gym knows who Zula is and like, you know, like the quote, it takes a village, like everybody watches her, everybody makes sure she's mm. safe. So like, it's cool. It's, it's very nice. My daughter, when I did uh, Muay Thai, I was doing private Muay Thai, my daughter would come and just run around the gym and mm -hmm. copy me and yeah. it's just uh, just leading by example. It's, exactly. It's just, I don't know why we got to tear each other down. I know. And it's always unhappy people that do it too. Like happy people Overweight. or positive people, they yeah. know like you're not supposed to do that. You shouldn't do that. Like everybody has to start somewhere. Yeah, and any negative stuff I've had, I've seen on other people in you go, and especially when it comes to nutrition, it's never someone who's healthy, who's in shape, who's tearing down some nutrition information. Mm -hmm. Nope. It's always someone a healthy, super overweight, obese. Mm -hmm. And I was like- It's just a bullying like, tactic. Yeah, people like yourself don't like to tear other people down. Like right. when's the last time you tear someone down? Probably you can't remember, right? Not off the top of my head. Mm, because you don't, live that way right there's more important things to life yeah it makes you feel better to uplift other people mm. like you put out good good comes back absolutely so another thing i want to touch on too is you seem to you seem like from your instagram that you train right through your pregnancy mm -hmm. so i saw you you're pretty big you're like nine months in oh yeah and you're still at the gym yeah that's I was, crazy I did my best. that's so cool yeah i wasn't 
it was it was challenging i will say i did i tried to at least get like two to three workouts in whether even it was just like walking or doing simple things but i do think that movement is important throughout the pregnancy mm. you know everybody is different i felt lucky though i didn't you know get morning sickness i didn't i wasn't uh what's the word when bedridden yeah bedridden yeah bedridden yeah. so i was able to move so i tried to move all the way through do you, um, from your background and your education, do you think that's important and you think everyone should be doing that? If oh. they can, I mean, if they're not sick or right. whatever if it is. Right, if they're able to, and it's never too late to start. So even if you're, you're six months into your pregnancy, you can still start. Like I do think that learning proper breath work, even like starting there mm. is a great place to start. However, with my background, I don't think that it really prepared me for the whole pregnancy journey and then delivering and then postpartum. I don't think that it prepared me for that. So I did have to do a lot of my own research on that end. Yeah, but do you feel like there's a stigma that if you're pregnant, you shouldn't exercise? Oh yeah, especially like with the older generation, mm. like so many of like the older moms would be like, Zoe, no, you don't like, don't lift that. You're going to, you're going to strain yourself. You're going to hurt yourself. And I'm like, that's old news. <laughs> like, it, it's so outdated, been right? been wrong so many times. And the way I look at it too, if you go back a couple hundred years ago and you're pregnant, you had to function, you had to survive, yeah. you had to prepare food, you had to make fire, you had to, yeah, exactly. you couldn't just sit there and like play on your phone and, and be safe. Exactly. Like you just... The, I talked to a midwife and she was like, whatever you did before, continue doing that. So if you lifted weights before, continue that. If you ate this before- This like, is from a midwife, a was midwife, it? A midwife, yeah. And mm. she, because I was asking her, I was like, well, what about like fish? Like I like sushi. And she's like, if you ate sushi before, eat sushi. Oh, before. really? Mm -hmm. So that's interesting. Yeah. I feel like anything with pregnancy, I think it's a more of a disclaimer to mm. play it safe because everyone sues each other in this in this country. Yeah. So if something goes wrong with your pregnancy, oh, it must have been the fish. It must have been this. It must have been that. Yeah. You just want to pin it on something. But mm. no, the mid it was really cool talking to a midwife and getting all that information, like just the more natural perspective of it. Because I feel like hospitals were very like fear based and like, don't do this because this might happen. Mm. Don't do this because this might happen. Whereas like midwives are like, nope, your body was designed to do this. You can do this. And I was yeah. Like, oh, okay. Yeah, that really stood out. I've had one guest and it was one of my first guests and um, she was a personal trainer. She had a baby. She trained all the way through the day before she had the baby. So it was really refreshing and, and yeah. nice to see someone else doing the same thing. Because yeah. I personally trained for eight years. I would always, if a lady was pregnant, I would train her absolutely. Mm -hmm. But train within what she could do. Right, and exactly. Uh, as they got bigger and they slowed down, you just slow down the exercise. Mm -hmm. How much difference did it make for you training through and recovering afterwards, opposed to taking nine months off, eating whatever you want? Mm -hmm. Um. I think my recovery, from what I hear, compared to other people, was very quick. It was. I ended up having to have a C-section. Okay. After 28 hours, they were like, all right, we oh, got a C-section. Oh, I was like, oh, that sounds awful. okay, great. So that was pretty challenging because they also don't give you any rehab for that. Like for mm. any other surgery, they prescribe rehab for a C-section, like getting cut open. They don't prescribe any rehab. So learning how to rehab myself in that sense um that was pretty challenging but i do think that because i was so active before it helped me become active after um my doctor actually kind of slapped me on the wrist she told me i was working out too much because oh, afterwards afterwards she's like mm. well how's your activity been what have you been doing i was like well you know we went to a restaurant i've been doing laundry and dishes and i'm like, just walking around the house she's like that's way too much. You need to stop. That's exercise. I'm like, no, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is a regular person exercise. Yeah, she's like, walking is exercise for you right now. I was like, that that's good. Yeah, that's humbling, isn't it? <laughs> it was. That takes you back a step. I was like, okay. <laughs> Do you find um just having body aware, your personal body awareness that helps too? Because you know what you can and can't do. You know your strengths. You know your limitations. Yeah. I feel like if you've never exercised, you don't really have that body awareness. I would say overall, yes, but in that sense, it didn't because like I'm so used to like exercise being getting on a treadmill or lifting weights, mm. whereas like me, she's like standing counts as exercise for you right now. Like you just <laughs> got your abdominal wall sliced open. I was like, oh, OK. So in that sense, it didn't. But I think overall, as far as like gauging what I can do. I think that helped because like I started off really easy with just breath work, which even in my mind now, like that doesn't count as exercise, but it really does, mm. especially when you're rehabbing your, like your core, 
That's super important. And then like moving on to um, like ab exercises that are pelvic floor friendly. Okay. I think that was a big um, lesson for me too. That's interesting. Mm-hmm. As far as, um, so doing your degree, what did you get out of it? Would you, would you do it again if you're given the choice? If I would, I would definitely do it again, honestly. So what, what were the benefits of doing the degree from think, like what, what you're doing now and I where you want to go? I think the benefits of it are when I have, I feel confident taking any type of client, whether they have you kind of injuries. really well rounded, aren't you? Yeah, because yeah. like, I've worked with seniors, I've worked with children, I've worked with athletes. I've you've been with... trained. You've you've studied all of that, haven't you? Yeah, yeah that that's a good point. Mm-hmm. Mm. Because I actually worked with um, seniors for a year of my life, like just seniors, and I feel like because of my degree, I was able to modify exercises based off of what they're able to do. I'm able to look at their body and see, okay, well they have. A hunched over so we need to work more back muscles okay. we need to stretch their chest and just being overall like having balance and interesting even like in my clients now if something gets hurt or they come to me they're like hey this has been bothering me what do you think it is i'm able to give certain different ass- or different assessments you get a deeper understanding yeah and mm. i think that i'm able to help in that sense like they're like this has been bothering me and i'm able to like check the range of motion or see what's going on and then to modify the exercise based off what they can do. And I feel okay. like other trainers, if they have other um, education and like they go out and teach themselves this, yes, but I feel like other trainers aren't able to be like, okay, their knees are hurting when they're doing lunges. I don't really know what to do from there. I just okay. know that it's hurting. Whereas I can do a certain test and be like, oh, okay, we, we can't do lunges, but we can do this instead. Like, And we also can treat this and fix this by doing this. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Like I said, I did personal training, but I never did like a degree. Right. So it was just from me training and doing a, what, six month for a one year course or something. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I didn't have anyone near the understanding that you did. And so I could, I could definitely back, see the advantages. Yeah. If I could go back and do it again, I would get my degree in exercise science and then I would further it and do the doctorate of physical therapy. Oh, really? Therapy. Okay. Because I originally wanted to go the physical therapy route but then my senior year i did an internship at a physical therapy office and i didn't really like it that much (laughs) not for me yeah well like the assistants seem to have fun like they get to be hands-on and like working with the clients whereas the actual physical therapist they go in they do the assessment they pick the exercises that they need to do and then that seemed to be it oh really and so i was like that's boring so kind of like a doctor nurse type thing yeah so i would love to get the degree to have the knowledge that they have but then continue to personal train okay or go a little bit higher and work with like higher up athletes or that's interesting would you recommend like i feel like a lot of like you're 18 go Mm -hmm. to school you rack up this massive like school debt and 52 percent of people drop out a degree Mm -hmm. and then a lot of people do get the degree don't end up working that in that field Mm -hmm. i like what you say would you recommend somebody like volunteering or working in something before they decide to go to school to do that yeah i definitely think you should go into college knowing what you want to do i feel I feel kind of lucky because I originally went to college because I wanted to play volleyball. (laughs) Oh, really? Yeah, I was a volleyball player and then I got scholarship and I played college. I ended up changing my degree three times. I went in undecided, changed it to exercise science, changed it to criminal justice, changed it back to exercise science. Yeah. So like I was like, I don't really know what I want to do in life. I do know I want to play volleyball. And so that's why I went to college. Okay. And I just got lucky that I ended up loving my degree and loving what I can do with it. Lucky. Yeah, lucky. Whereas I didn't go to college because there's nothing I was very passionate about Mm -hmm. where I could justify the money or the time. Yeah. And I noticed a lot of athletes too that go to college, I would ask them like what they're majoring and they'd say business. And I'd be like, okay, what are you going to do with that? They're like, I don't know. I just know it's a good degree. I'm like, okay. So many business degrees. So you, you know they're going to get it and never use it all. Yeah, no. Mm. And so I definitely think, like, I coached volleyball last year for 17-year-olds. And when I was talking to them about college, I was telling them, like, think about what you want to do as your career. Like, don't just go to college just because you think it's what you're supposed to do. So being Australian, there's a lot more pressure in America to go to college. Mm-hmm. I don't know if people will realize how much pressure is put on people here. If you don't go to college, you're a nobody or you're not smart or right. you're not going to make money or you're not going to go anywhere in life. Mm-hmm. Um, in Australia, it's nowhere near as much pressure to do it. Really? But I think it's I think it's a, I don't like to say brainwashing thing because I think college is, well, maybe. I think so. I think, 
I think college is great for certain things, mm -hmm. but the expectation that everybody should go to college, I think is BS. Yeah. And I saw a TikTok yesterday actually, and it was a guy asking college students how much they think entrepreneurs would make without a degree. Mm. And these people were like, oh, $50,000. <laughs> $80,000 <laughs> and it just showed the brainwashing that these people just thought that if you didn't have a degree you weren't going to make real money right and 80% of people who make the most amount of money are people who work for himself yeah whether you're just a personal trainer or you're a photographer or yeah. you or you sell cookies in a shop yeah and that's honestly when I moved to becoming a personal trainer that's what I struggled with was more so the entrepreneurial mindset because mm. I've always been a part of a team I've always been told what to do when to do it and then I became a waitress and then I was a part of a team and then I did well there but then I became a trainer and so reaching out getting my own clients learning how to sell like it's something I'm still struggling like Bray has helped me a lot in that sense it's business like she's like you need to raise your prices <laughs> I, I was, was like what I was 21 when I first started personal training. Yeah. I was like, I love training. I was passionate about it. I did it five days a week. And then I realized that, hey, training is more than, training is a business. Yeah. You need to be able to get clients. Yeah. You need to be able to pay your rent. Mm -hmm. It's so much more than training people. Yeah. And still today at 43, running my own business, 95% of it is marketing, getting the clients, yeah. to get the actual work uh -huh. and that's what you're finding right it's that's it's not I've just training people more because nowadays it's like through instagram and so i'm like well that okay. didn't exist when i was doing it i know so you had to like go out i couldn't even imagine I, so the best thing i ever did was personal training at 21 mm -hmm. because i wasn't this i was always shy in school and then all of a sudden i'm working at this gym two thousand people in there i gotta walk yeah. up to you and make conversation and can um, convince you to pay me money. Mm -hmm. And a 60 year old man and a 30 year old lady. And yeah. it's the best thing I did as far as getting him out of my shell and getting me confident. Mm -hmm. And after that, I just built on confidence, confidence, confidence. Mm -hmm. And also not taking no personally and just, and it's a numbers yeah. game. The more people yeah. you talk to, the more you convert. Mm -hmm. That's probably all the things you're going through now, right? Yeah, and also, well, cause I did dog training before personal training. Oh, you did? And the biggest thing was going to people's houses and selling them. So like my mentor at the time was really big on teaching sales. Mm. And so being able to bring that over to personal training has been helpful, but definitely something that I don't want to say I struggle with it, but it's hard for me. I'm mm. not natural. So having to sell myself, I'm like, why do I have to sell myself on personal training? Like, it's amazing. You should do it. I'm a great trainer. <laughs> like, you know? but yeah. People get, but they're just like, okay. Like, it's the I'm saying fine. you could be you can have the best product in the world but if no one knows about it no one's gonna it. use you yeah or if you exactly. can't sell it yeah when nobody I, cares what you know right like you could be the greatest but if you can't present yourself or sell yourself well then you're not going to get any clients and especially someone with your education you could name every muscle every joint every attachment nobody cares nope not at all not is this going to help me lose weight <laughs> yes or no yes. that's all they need to know i know and sometimes you need to really simplify it dumb it down mm -hmm. because that's all the client needs to know yep yeah it's cool that you understand that for the elderly or younger people or people mm -hmm. with injuries but as far as the general masses yeah are you going to get the results yes or no right that's all it matters and you can overload people with information so easy too. i had to learn that i was like okay Zoe. simple stupid like yep so i have to simple, know stupid. certain clients they kind of geek out with me and they like like hmm. to know the whys i'm like oh yes this is cool explain right this to you but other clients i'm like just do this here's how you do it this is why we do it <laughs> eat this don't eat this ABC. Yeah. simple <laughs> super simple i like that mm -hmm. um and then what why are you passionate about this stuff like so i grew up with like my family doesn't have the healthiest relationship with food. Okay. Like I come from a pretty athletic family, but their relationship with food was always like, I kind of had the parents that did the, like I grew up, they did the Atkins diet. They did the fiber one diet. They did the Nutri, Nutri plus something. They did this all is, the different uh, kinds. Your mom of diets. and your dad? Yes. Okay. Like the Nutri grain diet, that one they did weight watchers. And so I think it was when I was like 15 or 16 is when I started to like talk to my coaches and I was like, how can I become better than other people? Like, how can I become this better than this volleyball player, just, okay. my volleyball coaches? And they so were that was, like, that was your thing. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes. Volleyball was my passion. And, um, I asked them, I'm like, how can I be better than this player? Like, how can I? And they were like, you need to focus on your nutrition. I was like, okay, well, what do I do? And so mm, then okay. they kind of started giving me hints. I started meal prepping at like an early age. And then I was like, okay, now what can I do? And they're like, you can be training. 
and they gave me this quote. They're like, when you're resting, somebody else is training. And I was like, oh, mm. I'm never going to rest. <laughs> That's like a boxing thing, right? Get up. Yeah. Like when they're running at four in the morning, mm -hmm. knowing that opponent's not doing the same. Yeah. Gotcha. It was. And so. So it was through necessity you started learning like nutrition. Yeah. Okay. And then I just like improving my own vertical, improving my speed, just because I'm kind of a short volleyball player. Like I'm tall in real How life. Tall are you? I'm 5'8. Okay. And so, like, on an average day, I'm. I'm pretty tall but like you go put me on a volleyball court and i'm short uh, gotcha. and, but i played front row so i was like i need to jump high i mm. need to be smart and just i think the human body is so cool like everything that you can force it to do um the biggest thing i think is teaching people that like your mind will quit before your body does mm. and especially when i was a volleyball coach trying to instill that in the youth is that your brain is going to want to quit. Like your brain only recognizes pain. Mm. It doesn't know the difference between this pain is good for you. It's making my muscles grow compared to this pain is bad for me. I need to stop. It just sees pain. Stop. Mm, so you need to be able to shut your mind up that's and be like, this is good for me. I was, I, yeah, I'd always tell people, if you're doing curls and your arms start to hurt, mm -hmm. you're not going to fall off. Right. As soon as you put the weight down, the pain goes away. Exactly. Keep going. Right. Like when I What's have, the worst that's going to happen? Exactly. Like when I have competitions with people, like a plank competition, for instance, they're like, give up. And I'm like, my body will quit before my mind does. <laughs> I promise that's you. That's the thing, right? <laughs> like, I was like, because I have just trained it. It's that mental strength yeah. is everything. Mm -hmm. And that transi uh, transitions into business. Mm -hmm. You may not see that so much yet, but you will. Okay. It, it's crazy. It's okay. exact same. That's cool. That's um, good. so you started like you're eating better, you're starting to see better results, mm -hmm. you're starting to break the body down, you're starting to perform better. Mm -hmm. And that's that's where the kind of addiction came from, was it? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. that's interesting. Yeah, I think it was just like wanting to be the best at what I did. Mm. And then I went to college and then it was a whole new transition because I was having to feed myself and my parents weren't there. How'd that go? <laughs> well, my freshman year I definitely gained ten pounds mm. after season finished. And I was like, well, this is horrible. So I went back that summer and that was actually a very humbling experience going from being like the top dog in high school to then thinking I'm going to be the top dog in college. And I'm like, oh, I'm playing with grown women yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. They are fast and they are strong. And they're just as driven as I am. Yeah. yeah. And that was amazing to be around. And so I was very humbled that year and I didn't play as much as I wanted to. And but I still had a great time. And so I went back that summer and I was like, I'm going to be the best next year. Like, I don't care. And I trained like I did two a days. I improved my vertical four inches that summer oh, wow. and I meal prepped and I was just on it that summer. And I went back and sure enough, like that's what happened. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. I find I always tell people this, like you go to school and you're active, your parents are cooking your meals mm -hmm. and then you go to college or you or you leave school. Yeah. And you put on 10 pounds. Yep. But for you, you were lucky because you're still active and you had a goal. Yeah. So you turn that 10 pounds around, you took it back off and you got active. Mm -hmm. But most people out uh, they're working 40 hours a week in a job they don't really like. They're mm -hmm. partying on the weekend. And that's where you start to go downhill. And that's where you never return from. Mm -hmm. Could you relate to that? I can understand. Especially, or you see people around you who have done that? Well, even especially going through the whole postpartum experience. Because like my body afterwards, everybody told me, you'll bounce back. You'll bounce back. And I was like, oh, okay, great. So then when I didn't bounce back as quickly as I was expecting to, that was really kind of hard on me mentally. And like, just like looking in the mirror and just like, <laughs> like being like, who am I? And not being able to do something about it. So I can understand why people get down on themselves and then they just, it's like a vicious cycle. They continue mm. to get down on themselves. I think that's what's hard about depression is it's like, you don't want to get out of bed. You don't want to work out. So you stay in bed. You don't work out. Then you feel bad about it. Then you kind of want to, but then you can't do it. And it's just like this vicious cycle over and over that. again. So like breaking that cycle is hard. Um, so I can relate to that a little bit because uh, it got to a point where I was just like, this sucks. <laughs> like, I don't like looking like this. I don't like feeling like this. But eventually, I think when you're in that mindset, I think the um, expression that I like to follow is some is better than none. Mm. So like do something. It, you don't have to go. I think everybody just tries to go all out right away. And that's why it's not sustainable. So it's just like if getting up and going for a walk is what you can do, 
go do that and then continue to do that. Yeah. And then the more you do that, the more you'll be inspired to turn that walk into a run or that walk into a jog or you'll go to the gym, something, but like mm. start somewhere with something. Yeah. I like what you said by that. Cause I think once you start to do something, I can now I'm walking and I'm walking three days a week. Mm -hmm. Now I'm more motivated not to have that Frappuccino. I'm going to mm -hmm. have that healthier version. Yeah. And it starts to, you slowly start to create momentum. Right. Mm. Exactly. I think of it, I used to tell my girls like with habits, think of it like you have a piggy bank of bad habits and you have a piggy bank of good habits. Mm. There's no in between. So are you going to put a penny into the good habit bank? Like and literally just a penny, like it doesn't have to be a dollar, doesn't have to be 50 cents, just a penny. Like, but over time you continue to put a penny in the good habits compared to the bad habits. You're going to have a lot more good habits than you are bad habits. Mm, I like that. Mm -hmm. And I like what you said too. If you if you haven't trained for five years, 10 years, you don't eat well, mm -hmm. you can't suddenly go to the gym every day. Right. And eat perfect. Yeah. It's, it's not, not it's not sustainable. And then you're just going to feel like a failure. You're going <laughs> to bounce back so hard. Yeah. But if you do, a um, friend of mine, he always says one variable at a time. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of what you're saying too. Mm -hmm. Just one thing and get that consistent. Whether that's one less soda, one less cigarette. Yep. One more walk. What, whatever it just well, one walk. Whatever yeah. it is, just one thing. And then start to build on those habits over mm -hmm. time. And if it took you 10 years to put weight on, don't expect to take it off in two weeks. Yeah. Being realistic with yourself too. That was the thing with postpartum. Like um, my daughter's father would tell me, he's like, Zoe, you grew this baby for 40 weeks. It's been six weeks since the baby's been out. That's a good point too. It's not going to be better. And I was just like, that's a very okay, good point. Thank you. <laughs> no, I know. See, that's a, that's a great example. I yeah. never thought about that. Mm -hmm. So like, hey, it's gonna so take give yourself you, grace. It's gonna take you a good couple of months to get back. A good. Back couple back months. to the norm. Never mind back to like the the fit side of you. Right. Yeah. Exactly. That was tough. That's that's interesting. And then um, with your personal training, how's it going? How like what what do you like about it? What's been rewarding for you? Hmm. I like with my weight loss clients to be able to give them hope that they're and just instill positivity into them because they usually start with me with very negative self-talk and I'm so fat and I'm oh, so- to you. Yeah, to me. While, you, while you're training like them While I'm training them, I'm like, I'm so fat. This makes me feel fat. And I just, always, I like reminding them, like, you're doing what you need to be doing right now. Like, you're doing a good thing. We need to focus on that. And they're like, okay, okay. And then as the months progress, I see a shift in their own self-talk. Self -talk. Oh, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. That's very interesting. I, and I, very powerful, though. Yeah, that's my mm. favorite thing about it is because um, to just see them start to view themselves in a higher manner, you know? Mm, and then okay. with the youth, I like to... I just like to think that if I can be a positive impact on their life, that they'll five, 10 years look back and be like, oh, Coach Zoe really helped me a lot mm, of this. Like that, because cool. I had a coach like that. She impacted You're planting my whole seeds. Life. Yes. Yeah. And I love that. So, like, if maybe in 10 years you have one of them on your show and they're like, oh, Coach Zoe, she taught me how to deadlift. She taught me how to squat. That's interesting. So that's what I like about yeah, that. Yeah, even me with this podcast, I can think of certain people who have implemented little things mm -hmm. when I was younger over the years, and I'm sure their names will come up through this. Yeah. So you're doing that for other people. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Yeah. And then um, with the elderly, what is what are some of the biggest things you're seeing like going wrong with the elderly? You talked about being hunched. Is it lack of flexibility? Is it lack of movement? Is it certain type of injuries? It's like all the above, honestly. That. What, what that is was, what is causing that? Um, I would say lack of movement overall. And it's tough because as you get older, you don't want to move as much Be anymore. Is that you because it's hurt and it's harder? Yeah, like you're just tired. Your joints hurt. Like you ache a little bit more. That was probably the hardest training I ever had to do was because like they didn't want to. Mm. Um, they were tired. And like, honestly, even having them do things like this like was exercise for them. Okay. And balance was the biggest thing because my job was to train them and it was supposed to be preventative to strengthen their muscles, to also strengthen their bones so that if they had a fall, it wasn't that bad. Yeah, yeah. So that they don't end up in the hospital because yeah. that, as we know, can cause serious decline. And so I would say the biggest thing is range of motion um, for them. Like they get very hunched over and they don't continue to move their bodies and stretch and do all the things mm. that they should be doing because they're tired. Like, again, like we're talking about that vicious cycle, their bodies hurt, 
they're tired, so they don't exercise, which causes their bodies to hurt to make it worse. and be more tired. And I'm Whereas just like, if they force themselves to exercise, they yeah. feel better, mm -hmm. they'd be more active. Yeah, my clients, yeah, my senior clients would either love me or hate me. Like there was mm. no in between. That, that's very interesting. And then um, diet wise, have you got a certain type of diet you recommend? Are you kind of catered specifically to each person? I usually will cater it specifically to each person, but I generally recommend like, I guess it kind of leans more towards the paleo side. Like if it if it grows from the ground, if it's natural, eat it. Yeah. The more processes something has to go through, the less nutrients it has. Yeah. And I typically try to, I find that a lot of people don't eat enough. Don't eat enough. Yeah, like okay. most people will eat like one, maybe two meals a day, but that's only maybe what, 1500 calories, depending mm. on what they're eating. So even if you are eating really healthy food, it, that there's less calories in it. Yeah, so there's less calories. You're only getting so many, and then okay. so you're not able to lose weight because your body thinks it's starving. Mm, okay, gotcha. So you're more of the three to six meal a day type approach? Um, not necessarily. It depends based off the person. So if they can only eat two meals a day, then what I learned through my nutrition course is it's not about changing how people already eat. Like, cause if they naturally eat two meals a day, it's like, okay, well, they're not going to eat six meals. That's not realistic for them. Okay. So what can you add to that meal to give it more calories? Okay. Can you maybe suggest a protein shake? Add in some chia seeds, add in some peanut butter, like yeah, little things nuts. here and there. High, more high calorie, be good, yeah, be good stuff. Yeah, because I think honestly, some some nutritionists will say you need three to six meals. Others will say you need to do intermittent fasting. I think there's balance. Like that works for some people, that doesn't work for other people. So I've done both. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Used to do six meals, now I do one meal. Exactly. So I mean, I don't think there's a right or wrong way. I think right. it's whatever works for you. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I'm also in my 40s now. Right. I don't want to eat six times a day. Exactly. It's a full-time job. It's hard to eat six it's, meals a day. It's, it's <laughs> I, I like eating. It's, it's more, it's like, every time you go or do something where's my next meal coming from where mm -hmm. is it do i have it prepped do i get a prep for the day so it eating. sucks yeah it's i'm hard. not a competitive bodybuilder i don't care about that right can i stay lean in my 40s by fasting yes mm -hmm. so let's let's go with that exactly so when i'm 60 is it going to be different who knows probably mm. no probably not no i i i I'd I'd probably yeah <laughs> i'd probably probably sit the same but yeah i like what you're saying there what what's the disadvantages of not eating enough calories? Um, so not eating enough calories. So basically your body, your BMR, basal metabolic rate, that's the amount of calories that your body needs if you were to just wake up and exist. Like just do this all day. Just just to function, right? Yeah, yeah. Like your organs need it, your brain need it, your muscles need it. And so now you have to take into account your activity level. And so that adds more calories. And if you're not meeting that, your body's going to think that it's starving and it's going to try to retain as much as it can. Mm, okay. So that could be detrimental to weight loss clients. What, how do you know how many calories your body needs per day? Um, it's based off of this uh, formula for male or female height, weight, and age and activity level. Do you think it's pretty accurate? Oh yeah, I would say it's pretty really? accurate. Really? How, how does someone find that? Um, you can just Google it, I'm pretty sure. And there, you can honestly just type in BMR calculator okay. and it'll pop up. And then from there, there's another formula that you can go to, to figure out like it'll add in your activity level. And if you wanna lose weight, like you can just Google weight loss calculator usually, and that will pop up. Okay, and then you add, hey, I play tennis mm -hmm. twice a week for 30 minutes. Yep. Okay. I, however, due to my nutrition course, it gives me a professional calculator and it helps oh, me. Gotcha. It has like weight loss, it has body recomposition, and then it makes a whole program so for So you get a real clients. accurate type yeah. of. As far as, so say me personally, I want to lose weight. Mm -hmm. How many less calories should you recommend like I eat, 500 to a thousand usually less per day less to, per day wow really depending on how much weight you want to lose and how fast okay what is that what is a healthy amount a healthy that seems amount? pretty excessive doesn't it like 500 to a thousand 500 is average a thousand is a lot okay but um a healthy amount to lose would be like a pound per week Okay, mm -hmm. and you think 500 ca the rest calories a day will is the way to do that mm -hmm. okay yeah I was just wondering what you thought of that because I know there's I know what I do. I know what other people do. Right. I was just wondering what you recommended. Yeah, that's a general rule of thumb. And then there's other things too that always need to be taken into account, like water intake, stress level. Stress is a big thing on weight loss, sleep. 
Mm. A lot of Americans don't get quality sleep mm. at all. But it's the cool thing to do, right? Right. Not Have you sleep. noticed that? Like, I know. Be you, vampires. <laughs> the, the less you sleep, the more you're hustling. Mm -hmm. Have you, you, ever, you seen that? Yes. No, you need to sleep. Yeah. How much sleep do you recommend? <laughs> uh, you should be getting like seven to eight hours mm. a night. Quality sleep. I got my aura ring. I got my check in for the year and I'm eight and a half hours a day. Nice. I'm, I'm averaging. I was like, that's, nice. that's awesome. Quality. Because yes. that's, and I sleep really well. Yeah. But it's cool to get four hours sleep and get up at four and hustle, right? Whoever thinks it's cool is lame. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I saw something I really liked. It's like the people who get up at four, they're mm -hmm. in bed by eight, nine o'clock at night. Mm -hmm. And I get to bed at 11, 12 at night, but I sleep until eight. 8.30. Right. So it, it's relevant, but I still do the same amount of work when I'm awake. Exactly. But you don't necessarily need to get up at four. Right. It's it's that self-awareness again. Mm -hmm. mm. Just getting what you need. Not what, everybody can wake up at four in the morning. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. What do you think? So like, you know, the stats, most of us are overweight or obese now. Mm -hmm. Kids are becoming obese. What, where are we going wrong? What are we doing wrong? How do we change it? In your oppression, like I would say, I mean, I think the lack of home cooked meals is a big thing. I think a lot it's of pretty people, simple in that, but I think yeah, right, right on the money there. And it's a lot easier to eat healthy when you're cooking from home, but I think it's not becoming like if you think if you feel like if you compare meals back then, like in the '60s and even '70s and '80s, compared to meals now, they're just much more unhealthier yeah it's and more accessible snacking yeah and all that. so generally speaking like when i grocery shop i stick to the outside of the groceries have you ever looked at your food in the gross when you're checking out looked at your food and looked at the food around you mm -hmm. it's kind of scary right yeah like it's all bright and colored and pretty and soda yeah. and chips and candy no. and i got like meat and vegetables right and i i'm always so proud of myself i'm like look at my healthy grocery cart I, 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 <laughs> i've never really looked until recently mm -hmm. and when i've looked i was like oh my god like i am so boring right this is why i'm gonna live longer exactly. and you look at every and it's funny i it's two different things come to my mind you could look at a coffee so you can look at a frappuccino and see someone's hand reach in and that's all you see mm -hmm. and you could dictate the way they look oh yeah and then you could look at a black coffee like i have and you could dictate the way someone looks mm -hmm. and i feel like you could look at someone's grocery cart or Big when town. they're checking out and it would represent how they look yeah would you agree with that 100 percent. Mm. big tell like i do that i'll look at people's groceries and then i'll look at them and i'll just be like mm. you can literally place bets on it right oh yeah You're like this person is obese yeah this person's probably slightly because overweight because they habitually get those things like mm. you know you go to the grocery store you know what you're gonna get every single time like we are creatures of habits yeah mine's literally identical every yeah, time every single time and so like colored things like even gatorade thing like that like anything with food coloring added to it like if it's super bright you have to remember they're trying to sell you on something which for is a illegal reason. in every other country but but america it is yeah, do you not know that? No. Skittles and um, the food out is they put in Skittles and Gatorades and stuff. You can't buy it in Europe. Oh my gosh. It's illegal. I did not know that. So I don't, and that's the thing. A lot of Americans don't know about the rest of the world or right. they haven't traveled. A lot of stuff that is sold in this country mm -hmm. cannot buy outside of this country. Wow. UK won't buy meat from America because of the way it's, it's made, or not made the way it's. Pff, produce what yeah. what I, whatever the right word is mm -hmm. uh, a lot of food colorings a lot of different things you can get in america you can't get in other countries wow yeah it's it's kind of scary that is really scary but america does not give a crap about care. its own people no. it's money 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 capitalism capitalism mm -hmm. it's really scary yeah mm. that's who's really in the scary. app um yuka that's why uka mm -mm. it's an app that it's, i think it's like um it's an app where you can scan the barcodes of foods and makeup and it'll tell you, it'll give you a rating from zero to 100. It'll tell you the preservatives in it, the additives in it. Wow. And then it would also, it's a free app too. And it'll also tell you the additives and how bad they are. Oh, I, so, you, go, you said? Mm, okay. I'm going to get that. It's really crazy. So you can scan something like Gatorade. Mm -hmm. Zero out of 100. Right. Even though it's a sports drink and it's really good for you. Right. And it's pushed. Zero out of 100. I think it's got eight different additives added to it. Mm -hmm. I think. Two or three of them are hazard, hazardous. I can never say that word. Hazardous. Has that one. <laughs> and it will tell you what the what the chemical is and what it does. Oh, wow. So, hey, this chemical will lead to this, this type of cancer. <laughs> but it will go a specific where it will lead this type, uh, lead to this type of cancer. Wow, that's uh, cool. This Gatorade has 
32 grams of added sugar to mm -hmm. it. Yeah. It's crazy. So mm -hmm. even as like one tip from me, if you just got that app and you scan everything you ate, mm -hmm. it would make your life a lot. You yeah. live a lot longer. Because right now, like I generally just look at the ingredients and if it looks like a chemistry project, I put it back. Oh, I like that. <laughs> like, I'm just talk, like, talk to I don't me know about that. that. If someone out there is looking to make more healthy decisions, mm -hmm. what should they be looking at? Um, so I'm not a numbers person, so I just like to know what I'm eating. And so if it's in the, I always look to the ingredients. You go to ingredients first, do you? I always go to yeah. ingredients first and I look for things that have minimal ingredients. Like if it has a whole list of things, I'm just like, don't want to mm. put it back. Again, if it looks like a chemistry project and I don't know what half the things are, I usually will if put it back. If you can't pronounce them or read it, right? That's a good if sign. If I can't pronounce them or read it. Mm. If it has color in it, like Gatorade, juices, things like that, I don't add it. And then I will look at the added sugars as well, if it has a ton okay. of sugar. Like for example, my roommate, she was sick for like three weeks straight and she was like, why, Zoe, why can't I just eat the orange juice from the store? Cause like I would squeeze her like fresh oranges and I'm like, drink this. Mm. And she'd be like, why can't I just drink the orange juice? And I'm like, this has 32 grams of sugar in eight ounces in one cup. It has 32 grams of sugar and your, tr your body's trying to heal and you're adding in all these extra sugars that it can't handle right mm. now. Like your body is weak. <laughs> like, And she's just like, oh, I just want my orange juice. I'm like, here you go. Here's fresh <laughs> orange juice for you. <laughs> Plus you get the, f <laughs> yeah, that's great. So I like what you're saying. So if you buy canned tuna mm -hmm. and it says tuna mm -hmm. and it says water, Good Pro to go. It's probably good to go. Good to go. But if canned tuna has 10 different ingredients in it. Like preservatives and all that. Or added sugar mm -hmm. or things like that. And then correct me if I'm wrong. The first ingredient is what's predominantly in the, in right. the thing the most, right? And then it goes. And then it staggers down. Mm -hmm. And then the thing, another thing to watch out for is there's a million different names of sugar these days, isn't there? Yeah. So many. Mm. I don't know them off the top of my head. But like you said, like if the second ingredient will usually be sugar. Like in most things. In most things, and right. And if it is, then I'm just like, mm. put it back. There's a, um, there's a book called Fat, Sugar, Salt. Have you okay. read it? Mm -mm. Read it. It's amazing. Fat, Sugar, Salt. It's amazing. It talks about food, uh, big food companies, what they've done, what they've done, how they get away with things. Mm -hmm. Hey, this food is absolute crap, but we're going to say it's got high in fiber because technically it does. Technically it is. And that one thing is going to outweigh all the other crap in it yeah but it, it's a it's very eye-opening yeah it's definitely i recommend a lot of to my fitness guests yeah, to read sugar it salt. okay it's, that's a good one. it's also very depressing it's sad too how like because for i was vegan for four years oh wait, really and like how they're legally allowed to label things like cage free that's, like these that's... are cage free chickens but like in reality they're in these tiny little huts yeah, they, and they... they can't move and they're just shocked up with steroids they can't even like hold themselves up and you I'm got this like, little extra corner and that makes them cage free <laughs> right like that's <laughs> they're not running around on a farm to say these are cage free that and that's the thing it's like every single every single piece of wording you've got to go research what that wording actually means right and then the next one have a different wording and that means something completely different mm -hmm. but you and you only have got to go out of your way to go research what that actually means mm -hmm. you can't take anything for what it is right and, and I can see why people And I mean, get you're smart and you're educated on this stuff and you still don't know. Right. How is mean, a normal person who hasn't got a degree in exercise science I know. or lives and breathes this? How are they supposed to know? I know. And I can see why people kind of just say, well, whatever, like I'm, mm. YOLO, I'm going to die eventually. Or like everything's toxic. Everything can cause cancer. But I mean, because they're not wrong. Like so many things are toxic and not healthy for you. Mm. And that that thought overwhelms people i think and so then they're just like well you know i'm just gonna live the best life i can that's to me that's just ignorant putting your head in the sand and i agree yeah i agree mm. what's your thoughts on um so having a child childhood obesity <sighs> it makes me really sad yeah it's kind of scary isn't it yeah it is really scary and it, it just makes me feel bad because like Kids are so vulnerable, especially going in like kids to teenagers, like when they actually start to become aware of their bodies. And it's like, well, they didn't really do that to themselves. Like that's a good point, right? Because yeah, if you're yeah, if you're overweight under ten, all of a sudden you become a teenager and you're overweight. Yeah, that's... and you're like looking at yourself in the mirror, like, am I pretty? Am I like yeah, attractive? Because like that's when you start to think those things. That's it. I never thought about that. Yeah, I always thought sad. from a health point of view, but like mental health and oh, I was thinking more and... mental health. Yeah, yeah definitely but, physical. I mean, <laughs> yeah, but I mean that that's huge in itself, right? Because it just, I feel like 
everybody wants to be attractive for failure but like you want your kids to be confident and feel good Mm. and food is fuel and so like if you're just putting in yucky fuel like they're not going to respond well like i'm a firm believer in like the triangle body mind soul body mind spirit and if one is lacking the others will also lack because they're trying to take over for this one and so like if your physical is lacking it's gonna definitely affect your mental health it's gonna affect your spiritual health so Mm. that's us so my neighbors here they're round yeah the the dad and the mom they're very round and they got i don't know it must be a two-year-old daughter maybe a five six-year-old they're both round Mm -hmm. to me that's child abuse yeah 100 percent child abuse Mm -hmm. um and i mean you can argue it which way but your kid who it's next to impossible when i grow up to be overweight it's it's (sighs) yeah your kid is overweight and they're gonna have diabetes and they're gonna live a shorter time because Mm -hmm. of you being lazy full stop yeah and to take it to yourself that's one thing right but But don't to your child because they don't know any better and to also to take into account in 2022 like kids are constantly on tablets they're inside they're not running around as much Mm. as we were when we were younger and so to add that onto the fact that they're not eating healthy foods or their metabolism isn't as probably as fast as it should be it's it's kind of sad to think about do you know how much sugar we take in uh out of sugar we have per day now i don't 22 grams 22 grams per day per day we should have we that's how much sugar we have per day okay. on average per person hmm. that's nuts the average child consumes their body weight and sugar per year hmm think about that my daughter probably weighs 40 pounds right 40 pound bag of sugar down her throat per year how crazy that's is crazy. that that's crazy think right about. yeah like when you put it into those perspectives it's, i don't think people really realize how bad it is right that's 42 grams of sugar oh, sorry 40 grams of sugar mm-hmm. just sit there and eat with teaspoon that's insane Dang. yeah and wonder why we got cancer and diabetes yeah. and heart disease and strokes mm-hmm. and yeah diseases have just gone up it's crazy and mm. i don't i don't think the medical like the medical industry that they even really care about healing you they just more so care about putting band-aids on things and not going to the root cause of everything uh, so i like what you say if you put a band-aid on something you make more money mm-hmm. full stop mm-hmm. you don't make money by curing people right or having people healthy mm-hmm. would you agree with that oh completely agree like what was it they made like a trillion dollars this year the medical the medical industry or the medical field really yeah like a trillion dollars and not one of it was spent on like teaching people how to heal themselves Mm. and so that's what i think is cool nowadays too like with how um like they're running out of antibiotics they're running out of certain medicines because so many people need them and or what are they called herbologists Mm. people that use herbs to heal themselves they're actually becoming more and more popular because people need to learn to heal themselves and i'm a big believer in that stuff like i I think that there is a plant for everything yeah i feel like we can we can treat ourselves i mean if you got an infection you actually need an antibiotic i think that's right. different mm-hmm. i had a um, pharmacist on here recently and she's saying some people take up to 30 pills per day mm. she's yeah. the one handing them over right. she doesn't want to be doing it, but that's a job and mm-hmm. she's saying some people take one and it's up three and it doesn't slow down yeah. and nobody is nobody i think I think you guys are probably the people who are doing the most amount of good out there, to be honest, because <laughs> when you think about it, a doctor and a nurse isn't teaching prevention. Right. They're, they're just, like you said, putting a Band-Aid on things. Mm-hmm. They're trying. They're not even trying to kill you. They're right. just trying to get you well enough to get out of the hospital, out of the doctor's office. Mm-hmm. Nobody's teaching. Who's teaching prevention? Right, nobody. You are. Oh, <laughs> I mean, but trainers are, nutritionists are. Yeah. But you guys are holistic doctors. You guys are very rare. There's not many people who are actually teaching you prevention opposed to cure. Mm-hmm. And I don't like to say cure because right. it's not cure. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm trying to do it. Right. Hey, if you eat better, you don't get sick. I don't get sick. Mm-hmm. Full stop. I know. I started taking ginger shots this year, and I will say, like, I have not been sick yet. Mm. I'm so proud of it. Just like, these onions themselves, onions and garlic, the power that those two things alone have is crazy just these little habits right like a little bit right now girlfriends in the other room dying from a cold 
here I'm talking to you. Right. It's the difference. Yeah. It's all those little habits that will make you more resilient and able to to deal with things. Mm -hmm. Can I feel a little bit of being sick? Absolutely. Probably 2% of it. Mm -hmm. I know something's there, but I know my immune system is strong enough. I'm still taking my cold showers. I'm still fasting. Right. Still cutting the sugar out. Mm -hmm. All these things will keep me healthy. Yeah. But the other way, you're going to end up like everybody else. Yeah, like I think you people have to think like medicine is just there to kind of alleviate your pain and your discomfort, but it's not actually giving your body what it needs to fight off. It's masking what? the symptom, right? Yeah, mm. exactly. Like, for example, antihistamines. Like, I have a friend that the second she starts to feel bad, like she starts to take a Tylenol. And I was like, you need to kind of sit in that feeling and let your body fight it off. I'm like, do you know what a histamine is? Mm. she's like no and i taught her and i was like well a histamine like you have to think of it it's like your body's first line of defense like if you hurt yourself or you get sick histamines are going to go to that area yeah. and attack it right away and so if you take an antihistamine you're taking away your body's first line of defense gotcha. compared to if you take an antibacterial or an antifungal that's actually going to go in and treat or like attack the bad bacteria but so it's like why are you taking away the good thing instead of trying to take away the not good thing. This is saying that humans are the only people who get in our own way of feeling ourselves. Have the, you ever the what? We're the only ones to get in our own way of mm. feeling ourselves. Animals will do it like naturally. Yeah. Every every other animal creature will do it naturally. Mm -hmm. We're the only ones to get in our own way. Pros and cons, I guess, of being so smart. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of like, oh, that's... It's, uh, what's the word? Doctors are the worst people to treat. That's what mm. they always say, or like athletes are the worst people to give rehab to because they're like, no, I can do it. I'm fine. <laughs> I, heard some, I heard something gold the other day, and I've been waiting to quote this. It was humans are, humans are smart enough to create our own food, mm -hmm. but we're stupid enough to eat it. <laughs> and I, I love that. I just like, oh, my God, That's that is so, so good. I feel like even the creators of all the unhealthy food, they, they don't eat it read this book and like the same read that creators book. of like tiktok and instagram they don't let their kids on tiktok they yeah. don't let their kids on instagram read this book all these people with ceos all these owners of the big companies they don't eat the food they don't let the family eat the food um they if they ate it at a certain point they don't eat it anymore mm -hmm. they're on the health wagon because they know what it's doing but they're making money off it's, it. It's it's nuts. It's crazy. Um, as far as you personally, good habits, things you have installed over time. Like obviously, you eat well, you mm. exercise, uh, journaling, meditation, cold therapy, saunas. Anything else that comes to mind that you do? Um, journaling, I would say, is a big one. It's but it's more so like spiritual journaling and praying, reading the Bible is okay. what I do. Um, I was doing the cold showers for a little bit. You were? Uh, I was. How was that? It was great. Also, although it was hard for me to wake up and put myself in a cold shower. It's hot. It's, <laughs> that discipline is challenging for me. I like that you say that because it never gets easier. Right. Like journal journaling daily or something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not too bad. You enjoy it. Enjoy it's not that, that hard. <laughs> the cold, I'm just like. And I think, I think the pros and cons about the cold is nobody cares if you do it or not. Right. So if you don't do it, no one's checking on you. No one cares. Mm -hmm. You're not posting on social media. It's a very you thing. Yeah. So when you don't do it, no one knows that you slipped up and no one's, no one's right. keeping you accountable. Mm -hmm. But if you can somehow continue to do it and do it for yourself, it's so rewarding to know that every single, like I journal every day now, every day um, I got a section, uh, something that made you uncomfortable, cold shower. Cold shower. Cold, cold shower. shower. Cold so that shower. is, the, I'll do other things, but that's the number one thing I write every single day. And is your whole shower cold? Whole shower is cold. <sighs> and, and I won't lie, I t occasionally if I want to have like a shower and just enjoy myself, mm -hmm. I'll go cold for like two, two and a half minutes. I'll have like maybe a five minute warm shower and then I'll finish off cold for two, three minutes. Okay. So you always got to close. Balance. You always got to start cold because that's the most uncomfortable thing that nobody wants to do. Right. And you always got to close cold because that closes your body down. That's, mm. That takes away the information. And then with Wim Hof so talks sense. about um, you got to do it for at least two minutes to get the benefits of the cold. Mm -hmm. And anything past that is, um, is more mental. Okay. So the other day I did a 10 minute one which was extremely long. After about six minutes, I just became numb and it yeah. wasn't too bad. Mm -hmm. But the first six minutes were like, damn, hurry up. I know, with ice baths <laughs> becoming so popular now, because mm. I was forced to do them in college. Oh, you re oh yes, for recovery. For recovery, and I hated it so much. I just bought one. 
and they're great but like you thought i don't know if it's just because i was forced to do them i'm just like i don't want to like i know i can sit in it for like 10 15 minutes because yeah. i had to but now like to just willingly get in an ice bath i'm like like part of me is like it's so good for you but the other part of me is like i don't want to <laughs> for, for me it's it's the mental strength that comes with it yeah it's the fact that nobody cares you don't have to do it mm -hmm. no one's holding gun to your head but if you can make yourself do it it just may it mentally makes you so strong yeah and then the rest of your day is easy because like hey i stood in the cold for no reason and you feel so refreshed Oh, yeah. I mean, the energy and stuff that comes with it is insane. It but is. the fact that I don't get sick, all these extra benefits, but it's just that mental strength it gives you. Yeah. I've got a guest coming on in a week or so, and her and her husband, they got like the ice chest. And every morning I see her doing the cold thing. Mm -hmm. I was like, damn, I want to be able to do that. Right. So I just found one on, um, it's like 150 bucks. It's like this big tub. Okay. comes with a lid. Just ordered one. Is it one. the circle one? Mm, nice. Just ordered one. It'll be here soon. So I'm going to start posting my ice bars. Nice. And I was also thinking about doing some content from it too. That'd be cool. Like where you give out value, but like here I'm sitting there as comfortable as possible trying to share value at the same yeah. time. That'd be Leading really by cool. example. Because mm -hmm. I mean, we can talk about it all day long on here, but when people actually see you doing things, I think. It's got yeah. a little bit more power to it. Also, too, I think maybe talking about like the benefits of why it's good for you. Because mm. I think a lot of people just see people jumping in ice baths and they're like, why is this so popular? Like, why is this becoming a thing? And it's kind of douchey in a way. A lot, <laughs> a lot of it's been, a lot of it's done real douchey. Like, I, had, I saw one girl on TikTok, she's having this cold shower, she's moving and yelling and screaming. I'm like, it's really not that bad. It's like, not. You're just doing it for attention. Yeah. Like, talk about why it's beneficial. What has right. it done for you? Mm -hmm. Like, the fact I've done it for six years every day, like, this is why I'm stupid enough to do this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, do you do it, any other like uh, daily habits, good habits? Mm. Anything you recommend? Walking. I think that's a very simple one to do, but mm. just getting outside, getting in the sun, just walking, not at attached to your phone the entire time. Mm. Like disconnecting from your phone is a big one. Mm. So I like that. I would say that's a. Good is that something habit. you do? Mm -hmm. I try to go on walks. I'll take Zula out on a walk. Let her kind of just like lead the way. We're working on keeping her by me right now. Cause she's yeah. just like run across the street. So Get all kids, right? we're that, learning that. I always say that though, right? I've seen so many parents over the years who the kids have run away mm -hmm. and they're not being able to chase them because they're overweight. That scares <gasps> the hell out of me. Have you ever seen that? No, but. I've seen that so many times where a kid has got 10 <gasps> feet in front of the parent. That parent isn't catching that kid. If that kid starts running towards the road, that kid is in trouble. And that scares That's me. That's unacceptable. That scares me a lot, right? No. Like, See, when I train, I, I add a lot of body weight exercises into my training because I tell all my clients, you need to be able to move your own weight. And then for my moms that I have, I put more weight on them. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, and this is an extreme, but I'm like, you don't know when you're going to need to drag somebody out of a burning building. Mm. You don't know if your kid's going to try to jump off a cliff one day and you have to grab them and yeah, pull them up. Yeah, you got to move if you actually have to, right? Like, so many people think like they can do things, but it's like you actually can't. Like I usually will have them like hold onto a bar and just hold themselves up. And I was like, okay, just imagine you're hanging on a cliff right now. Let's see how long you would live for. <laughs> Not long. And it's usually like 12 seconds max. I hang every single day because mm -hmm. I think it's the best thing you can possibly it's do for your shoulders. It's such a great exercise. And even I'm only hanging for 45 to a minute mm -hmm. max. It's hard. It's hard. And I do it every single day. Yeah. It's such a, it's one of my favorite exercises. Just for like, um, for just for shoulders and. Back, shoulders, core, everything. I think it's great. Yeah. And you kind of feel like your body just stretch out yeah you, like you hold for 10 seconds all of a sudden you feel like something kind of drop and yeah. then you hold and i'll do it every which way with my hands trying to get every angle because mm -hmm. i end up having a shoulder injury from falling and um i got rid of it from hanging oh i wow. took a year and a half right very slowly working through it stretching the bands were really good too yeah like the the rubber bands pulling every which way trying to because as you know there's not a lot of room in your shoulder mm -mm. so if it's something slightly off it gets impinged and that mm -hmm. impingement is very hard to treat yes so i yes, think if you are struggling from impingement i think hanging would you agree with that i uh, yeah definitely big benefit for as long literally daily for like i think they say like five minutes a day like total accumulation? Yeah, because no one can hang. <laughs> Obviously. Because <laughs> we both can't hang for five minutes Stay now. <laughs> um, any other? I like this. Say, I like you talking about with walking and being off your phone. Mm -hmm. And I see it in a lot with parents where they're not present. Yeah. They're on the phone. Yeah. It's, that's Especially like at restaurants and things like that. Even at like the park though. Mm -hmm. I've been to so many parks over the years. I think 
parents are on the phone. They're not watching right. the kids. They're not interacting. They're not playing with the kids. Mm -hmm. And that's why when talking about like leading by example, kids grow up and then they want a tablet. And then the parents are like, why don't you ever want to spend time with me? It's like, well, you're always mm. just like looked to, like connected to your phone. And kids grow up quick. Like they do. Like I said, my daughter's nine. Very I remember quick. three when she was at the park, but I wasn't on my phone. I was around the running around the park chasing her, trying to lead by example. Right. Mm. I really try to make it a habit to not be on my phone when I have Zula. Mm, because it's, it's special time and it goes very quickly mm -hmm. and it's not guaranteed the next day. Right. So. And I just don't want her to feel like like this is more important than her. You know? 100%. It's probably the, probably the biggest thing, right? Yeah. Mm. Um, before we finish up, anything else you want to touch on? Anything you want to kind of share? What, uh, do, what are you passionate about? What do you want to get across to people? What do I want to get across to the people? Even as far as like being happy and doing what you like for a living and following the direction you want. I mean, obviously, like you don't work for someone else anymore. Mm -hmm. You probably love what you do. Mm -hmm. You're in charge of your own life. Right. I think the biggest thing is if you don't like what you're doing, start doing something to change it. Like we talked about earlier, just do something small that you enjoy. Invest into yourself because so many people will invest into their husbands or their best friends or their work or they're investing into their kids. But if you don't invest into yourself, ultimately at the end of the day, then you're not gonna be able to give a lot to other people. To be selfish yeah. for yourself sometimes. No, yeah, I don't think absolutely. selfish is the right word, but. Yeah, not selfish, but like it's important to take care of you. Like you time. Yeah. Mm. Take care of you, you'll be able to take care of others better. But mm. like, and set boundaries. I think that's really important. Yeah, Bray mentioned that. I liked how she mentioned that. Yeah, it's very important. There was, it's a Bible verse that's a golden rule. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Yeah, I'm not religious, but I preach that all the time. Oh, it's Treat people so the way big. you want to be treated. But somebody just blew my mind. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. But like, how do you do to you? Like, are mm, you nice to you? And I yeah. was like... Uh, okay. But that saying, right? The way that we talk to ourselves, you'll never say to somebody else, right? A friend or a stranger. That's what I always ask my like my clients. I'm like, would you talk to me like that? Like, would you tell me that I'm fat? Would you tell me that I'm just this horrible person? They're like, no. I'm like, don't talk to yourself mm. like that. Like, your words have so much power. And so, and I know you. I saw a podcast you did. And somebody else was talking about like the importance of words. Mm. But like your brain, you have to think about it that it's stupid. Like even if you don't mean what you say, like I'm so dumb. If you say that every single day, you're gonna start to believe it. Yeah, that's interesting, right? I'm so fat. I'm so uncoordinated. I'm so clumsy. It's hard because I don't talk to myself like that. Nor right. can I remember any time I have. Right. So it's hard to relate. Mm -hmm. But how how do you break out of that? You have to force yourself to number one, recognize when you're doing it and then change it right away. So like, okay. So like if it was, I'm so fat, be like, Oh, I just said it. I'm not fat. I'm working on myself oh, I like towards that. becoming a better person. I like that. Like shift it into a positive. Even if like, I always tell, even if you don't believe it, you can even say it with sarcasm. I'm so healthy. Like <laughs> you don't have to believe it, but you have to say it. Like, <laughs> You know that saying, what you think about is what you become? Yes, it is I think so that's, true. I think that's consciously or subconsciously. Mm -hmm. Or you're saying it out loud or you're saying it to yourself. Mm -hmm. You I, have to trick yourself. Yeah. Like they even say you can go in a mirror and fake laugh for like, I think it was like 10 to 15 seconds and then you'll trick yourself that you're happy. I think, yeah, Tony Robbins talks about laughing. that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he talks about like you stand up tall, your chest up, mm -hmm. head up. Yeah. Yeah. You smile. You will feel better. Yeah. It's very hard. Uh, what he says, it's very hard to be in a depressed state if you stand in a strong, happy state. Right. I think like learning about body language and just like little confidence cues or mm. those are always nice. Like you said, sit up straight, shoulders back, chest high, things like that. Mm. Make eye contact with people like you are worthy to look at this person, things like that. I think that's always helpful. Mm. I like that a lot. Yeah. Cool. Thank you very much for yeah, your time. Thank you. That was a pleasure. I love that you're a mom. You're leading by example. <laughs> and I want to see your daughter deadlifting some weights yes. soon on Instagram. When she's three years old. She'll be <laughs> yeah, when she's three, right?